Hello again, David Leitner here. In June, I took the C-500 to Central Park in New York to shoot 4K test footage in Canon log mode. Using the Aja Keypro Quad to record the C-500's 4K raw output as 4K ProRes files, which is how the Keypro Quad records 4K. Since we were on our feet, we decided to use Canon's lightweight compact cinema zooms, the 15.5 to 47 mm and the 30 to 105 mm, both with three times zoom ratios. Their focal length ranges nicely complement each other and they're perfectly matched to intercut seamlessly, as you'll see. Like in real life, the weather didn't cooperate. It began raining as soon as we set up. Then, for the rest of the shoot, the sun came and went. The cloud cover constantly shifted, which is why you'll see the T-stops bouncing up and down. You'll notice thin black bars above and below the 16x9 frame. This slight letterboxing is due to the fact that we shot the cinema version of 4K at 4096 by 2160 pixels a 17 to 9 aspect ratio, which you'll be viewing in a standard 16 by 9 frame. If we had instead recorded 4K as Ultra HD, or 3840 by 2160 pixels, which is 16 by 9, there'd be no letterboxing. It's your choice when shooting 4K. Now, an uncompressed 4K raw signal is compact enough that, at our frame rate of 23.98, only a single coaxial BNC cable is needed between the C500's first 3G SDI terminal and the Keypro Quad. Upon input, the Keypro Quad instantly debayers the uncompressed 10-bit 4K raw signal and captures it to 4K ProRes 4444. This is recorded to a special Keypro Quad Solid State Drive, or SSD, called an Ajapak, which fits into one of the two slots on top of the Keypro Quad. The Ajapak comes in two sizes, 512GB and 256GB. The 256GB Ajapak we used recorded 30 minutes of 4K ProRes. We also took advantage of the C500's ability to simultaneously record to compact flash lower resolution proxy files for editing. In fact, these are the same 50 megabits per second MPEG-2 HD files the C500 records ordinarily. At the end of this reel, I'll show you some Central Park shots captured not as 4K, but MPEG-2 HD, so that by comparison, you can get a sense of what shooting in 4K contributes to image quality, even when the deliverable itself is only HD. In terms of my workflow, here's what you'll be looking at. It's a simple setup, really, taking advantage of Final Cut Pro X's easy handling of 4K. When importing 4K ProRes into Final Cut Pro X, I decided to have Final Cut Pro X automatically create half-size ProRes proxies for editing. This is simpler than importing a second set of HD proxy files. What is half of 4K? It's 2K. So I cut this reel using 2K ProRes proxies. What's more, the full 4K ProRes files played pretty well on my 17-inch MacBook Pro. So in editing, I had a choice to view and edit using the original 4K ProRes files or the smaller 2K proxies. I ended up switching back and forth a lot, which is easy to do in Final Cut Pro X. If you're wondering, the final deliverable for the online version you're looking at is HD in the form of ProRes HQ. Now let's take a look at some of the scenes we shot, in the order they were shot. Here's our first model. She's one hard-shelled New Yorker. Actually, she's a red-eared slider from nearby Turtle Pond on her way to lay eggs. We interrupted her as we were setting up. As Kermit the Frog sang, it's not that easy being green. And that's doubly the case when it comes to shooting tests for skin tone reproduction. Now meet Shannon and meet Holly. We started out at Belvedere Castle, midpoint in Central Park, and also the park's highest elevation. Since 1919, the National Weather Service has taken measurements from the castle's tower in the background. A lot of good that did us. Belvedere means beautiful view in Italian. That's Turtle Pond in the background. Now to be clear, although we're shooting 4K and capturing 4K RAW from the C500, what we're recording is 4K ProRes 4444. In other words, a debayered, intraframe, compressed 4K image, although one of extremely high quality, 10 bits per color, no color subsampling. When you shoot in 4K, Canalog is your only option. Your images incorporate an expanded tonal scale that extends the possibilities of color correction, which greatly benefits highlights, particularly skin tones. My workflow here is extremely simple. I'm not even using LUTs, which are lookup tables to apply across-the-board corrections to the flat, dark images produced by Canonlog, 
Here's a log image before color correction. Notice that all the tonal scale values are intact. No shadows are crushed, no highlights are burnt out. Pay particular attention to the white column on the right. Now let's look at a corrected image. Using Color Board in Final Cut Pro 10, I dropped the blacks, raised the highlights, left the midtones pretty much where they were, and added a little bit of midtone saturation because the day was so flat and overcast. Look at the contouring of the skylight in her forehead, the slight touch of sun in her hair. Now, notice the column on the right. It's clipped at 109%. Some would say, what's the purpose of shooting raw if you don't preserve all of the tonal scale? Well, I think this look makes her skin glow. To paraphrase Woody Allen, my eye wants what it wants. However, let's say we don't want to clip anything. Here is the same shot. All I've done is lowered the highlights and raised the midtones. The white column, now under 100%, is no longer clipping. This produces a flatter look. Some might prefer it. But there is no right or wrong here, only a wider palette of aesthetic choices made possible by Canon Log. For instance, this looks completely wrong with crushed blacks until your eye gets used to it. Then you realize it has graphic power. I used Graham Natris's popular NLE plugin Levels and Curves 2.0, which maps log values first to video, then to a film-like S-curve. Notice the waveform display, the signal squeezed between 0 and 100%, so-called broadcast legal. To my eye, this image looks like a telecine transfer from a projection contrast film print instead of color negative, which is what the previous examples remind me of. Now let me demonstrate another powerful reason to shoot 4K. Suppose I want to punch in from this shot. This is the previous shot, enlarged and slightly rotated. The 4K detail here is staggering. Here's a comparison to the same close-up, this time enlarged from MPEG-2 HD at 50 megabits per second. I think you can see the difference. Moving on in Central Park, we visited the lake. Oops, is that a French flag in the frame? No problem. Sometimes you do have to move the camera closer, or zoom, but this reveal was created while editing. I'm not a fan of bounced sunlight. An instant later, the sun vanished again. Now you can see delicacy in the skin tones that only a great lens and camera can deliver. Next stop, Central Park's Bow Bridge and some time out for tourism. Now, I'm going to repeat the next two shots on the bridge, the first time from 4K ProRes, the second time from 50 megabits per second HD proxy files. Notice the shift in exposure in the second shot from an arriving cloud. Now, I used exactly the same color correction settings for both of these sequences. Both were recorded simultaneously with Canon Log Gammas. The point is, as proxies, MPEG-2 clips are useful for editing, but not necessarily color correction, as are the Final Cut Pro 10 2K proxies I made. The good news is, matching MPEG-2 to 4K, as I did here, is just a matter of lifting the blacks, nothing more. My 256GB Aja pack had filled up, so I decided to switch from 4K and shoot our final Central Park scene at Bethesda Fountain, using internal compact flash only. Don't get me wrong, I shoot 50 megabits per second MPEG-2 HD all the time. It's a bread and butter codec, Great looking results, day in and day out, as you can see here. However, at the end of the day, MPEG-2 is 422 video. Shooting 4K is a step up. Not only more detail to play with, but with capture to 10-bit RGB ProRes, color gamut to spare. The final takeaway here? An hour of 4K recorded to ProRes at 23.98 frames per second is about a half terabyte of storage. If you can handle that, you're good to go. Thanks for watching our six-part series on Canon Cinema EOS. For more information, visit Canon's website or contact the experts at BNH. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.